Hey everyone, Jeff here from Films at Home. Thanks for coming back to the channel today for this podcast video edition. Now, I have to preface this video by saying that our video interview had some issues when it was recorded, primarily on my side. Totally my fault, but I had some issues with my video. I don't know if it was like internet bandwidth or something got screwy. So my audio in this video is not going to sound great. You can hear me, you can make out what I'm saying, but it's certainly not as good as it sounds right now. So just bear with me on that, but thankfully our guest, Matt Ferguson, his audio sounds great. Matt is a very talented artist and graphic designer who's worked on a ton of 4K Blu-ray releases in their artwork. He's worked on a ton of theatrical releases. He works with Marvel, he works with Disney, he works with some of the big names. He's done artwork for Arrow Video, for Shout Factory, for Studio Canal. He is really uh, up and coming, I would say, in, in the world of, of movie and you know poster art, theatrical art, packaging art. Uh, and he does a great job. So I was super excited to talk to him. And if you guys do want a, a better audio version, the audio only version of this podcast between Matt and I, um, for whatever reason, I was able to go back and uh, I was able to fix the audio version. But the video is still having some issues and we tried to overlay the audio on top of the video and it just it didn't dub correctly. It was, it was getting messy. It was really hard to do. So um, if you do want the perfect audio you can find that on spotify apple wherever you get your podcasts it's going to sound much better over there but if you want the visual format here's what we got here i apologize for that for that audio issue on my side we're we're fixing it and i, I already know what the issue is and we will be fixing it going forward so um, appreciate the support bear with me on this one but i think it's a great interview and if you do want to listen along um, certainly check out the the audio only podcast because that one sounds great so here we go. Here's the interview with Matt. Enjoy it. Sit back, relax, and I'll talk to you guys at the end. So, everyone, here is our interview. I'm here with Matt Ferguson today. Um, so, super excited to talk to him about uh, artwork on your your favorite Blu-ray and 4K releases. I am sure you guys have seen some of his work out there, and I know it's a, a hot topic sometimes, is, is the artwork that comes with our, our favorite movies. So, really excited to have Matt on the podcast today. Um, you want to just give a little uh, background on what you do, who you are? That would be awesome. Hi, yeah, uh, I'm Matt Ferguson. Uh, I, 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 pro, I mostly can't pronounce the word I was going to say there. I mostly <laughs> work in uh, film posters and marketing for, for for movies, but also I do a lot of work in like um, home entertainment as well. So DVD covers. Uh, specifically, I seem to end up doing a lot of like the anniversary re-releases on old films, which is cool because that's the sort of stuff that I'm interested in anyway. So, and there seems to be a new wave of like uh, remastered versions of old films at the moment, um, and it's a it's a good way to give somebody di something different with new artwork and stuff like that. So that's kind of like what I do. I just sort of make the artwork for stuff. Yeah. You're the man who makes the art. Um, so did you start, did you start in movie posters and then you sort of moved over to home entertainment or? Yeah. You... Well, yeah, yeah. I sort of do both. So I started out, um, like back in 2011 and the first thing I ever did was, uh, I did a fan, fan art for the Avengers uh, when that was coming out and I don't know how it happened, but basically it got, it got seen at, at, at the studio and, uh, Mark Ruffalo wanted a copy so somebody contacted me from uh, Disney Marvel saying, are you the guy that made this? And I was like, yeah. And I thought that they were just sort of, it was like a prank because I, I, I was working in a shop at the time. I wasn't like um, established at all. And, um, but it was real. So then I sent over a copy of the poster. Um, and then the next thing, they hired me to do the artwork for the phase one box set of all the Marvel movies. And that was like my first ever proper design job. Um, so I just jumped in at the deep end and that's where I started. Um, and then I, I did that and then I didn't really do anything because, you know, you do your first job 
and then nothing happens basically. So I started doing stuff for myself again and then doing posters for galleries in the US. And then you just sort of build up a reputation. And then it hit again big when Guardians of the Galaxy came out. I did a stupid sort of mashup poster of Star Wars and Guardians of the Galaxy. Because I, I, at the time working in the shops, I, we were talking about it, me and a friend at the, at the store, and they were like, it looks stupid, that film. What, what, what's so dumb? A talking tree? And I was like, no, no, no. Marvel are brilliant. This will be their Star Wars. And then I was like, so I thought for fun, I would do a mashup of the Star Wars poster. And it went viral online and sort of got more attention on me and then more work. And then I just sort of do, I do a lot of work with Marvel. Um, for, so that's sort of like the new films. Um, and then I've done stuff for, for like classic movies as well, like the big one being. Um, Empire Strikes Back did post the poster for the 40th. I saw that, and you won an award Empire. for that one, huh? Apparently I won an award. It's my first award <laughs> from this German podcast thing. That's I was like, I won an award! Because yeah. usually with awards, I think you have to sort of pay to get the award, you know? In design, oh, yeah. in, the, in the industry, you sort of have to put your name in the hat, so to speak. And I've never right. done that, because I don't care. I, I just do this stuff really for myself. And then it's a bonus when other people like it and people give me money to do it, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, I got an award for that one, <laughs> Poster of the Year. <laughs> yeah, no, that poster, is all, I was I was taking a look at it, actually. Um, it, it almost reminds me of, like, the old, like, Japanese Star Wars posters and the design of it. I really liked it. I don't know. It, there was something about the, the lines and just the you, you were using the lasers as, like, these, these guiding lines to this image in the middle. It, it was really, really nice trying to sort of do something sort of graphic and and less floating heads because obviously there's a lot of it's easy to go down the floating heads route with a poster but um it can also be seen as sort of detrimental sometimes if it's done well by somebody like you know like drew struzan and it's done properly then it can be amazing but also even Drew Struzan, like his best posters is like the Thing poster and the Back to the Future poster, which aren't floating head posters. They're more sort of illustrated. So, yeah, it's that sort of design element. Because I'm, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm a very good artist in terms of technical ability. Can't really draw for shit, to be honest. But I can, <laughs> I think I can design something and I can come up with an idea and a layout and a composition and stuff. So that's kind of like my strong suit which works on packaging because they want it to stick out on a shelf still that is something that they want even though nobody goes into stores to buy stuff anymore they still want stuff to stick out on a shelf well yeah and it's gotta it's gotta stick out on instagram feeds i suppose yeah Facebook yeah. now you know you gotta think small shelf. think small yeah right and that's and that's the thing you go from a you know you get a 27 by 40 poster that's one thing but now you you know you have to consolidate that down into this little blu-ray box and you really have to like maximize the space and that's very true yeah make sure it's a design that people can actually you know you don't have that space to see these little details so it kind of has to be like this this uh real i don't know i see a lot of like minimalist approach to the some of the the box art and i, I kind of like i always enjoy that i like it because if it's too busy uh you know it's like that'd be good for a poster but it's a lot it's a lot for yeah. blu-ray artwork so i do have the uh I have the Mar- Marvel Phase One set. That's blown up on TikTok a couple times. People love looking at that and the artwork on it for all those individuals. The one in the in the briefcase. Oh yeah, I got the whole briefcase yeah. with yeah. the the light up. Yeah, every everything's in there. Um, and then they all have their own individual little sleeves, which is like this really cool sort of like minimalist approach that you took to those, which I like. It was to be honest because I didn't really know what I was doing then, so all I could really do was really simple uh graphic things with photoshop you know because i work digitally um which a lot of people think oh photoshop's rubbish it's like you hear that a lot of time like oh that's a rubbish photoshop poster and it's like anything it's just a tool uh and it can be used either well you know good by somebody or badly so um yeah well the reality is i mean they're probably all photoshop right and when it's when it's good you don't notice it Exactly. Yeah. Well, I, I've, 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 a photo sort of poster, like a modern poster, 
can still be good. It's like they've just the new Thor poster. That's obviously a, a photo comp, but it's pretty cool. It's like a good uh, different poster. You know the color and the layout and and stuff. So it, again, it's just is it good? Yep. That's always my sort of metric for anything in my life. Is it good? Yeah. Do I like it? I don't care how it was made. Oh, it's yeah. lo- oh, it's oh, it's not proper. It's like in the art world with the posters and stuff. A lot of people sort of really highly prize like screen printed posters. So that sort of sort of handmade sort of, and it it's a little bit pretentious really because if the poster's good, it doesn't matter if if somebody's. I like I've always said that it's in a frame. It it's it, it looks good or it doesn't doesn't really matter how it was made. Yeah. No, I'm 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 with you, you know, I don't really if it if it looks great, I don't care if you drew it or if you use Photoshop or I don't care if you used, you know, use Microsoft Paint for all I care if it looks <laughs> right. Then you yeah, know, we we want to see something that looks good. I don't really care how the sausage is made, you know. It's make it look right, however whatever it takes. So um yeah, so working so like working with Marvel. Like, how is that? Because obviously it's, uh, I don't know, You are, are you under, like, these all these secret <laughs> wraps that they put the actors under? Yeah. And, or, you know, are you getting, like, these crazy... NDAs on, up the yin yang. So I'm always under yeah. NDA. Um, but that's kind of like, obviously, so you don't give up any secrets because you're making a poster and they will sort of show you um, stuff from the film. Sometimes I'm like, why did you show me that? You didn't have to show me that. <laughs> <laughs> so you're getting a movie spoiled for you. Yeah, right? sometimes, yeah. a few times I'm like, oh, great. But um, working with them is brilliant, to be honest. It's always been really good. They've always just sort of let me do what I want. I don't know if it's just because like, my sort of sensibilities tie up with theirs or they just sort of respect the sort of creativity, the sort of, I don't know, like – people having ideas and doing something different because um, I've worked with other places and other people where it's much more, they hold your hand and they give you a full on brief and it's got to be, it's very specific. Obviously if you're doing like a Dr. Strange poster, you're going to have Benedict Cumberbatch on there. So it's a no brainer, some of it, but it's like the Empire Strikes Back, which was with Disney. Yeah, this is, so it's basically the same people that work with on Marvel. They just said, do the Empire Strikes Back poster, please. And then I came up with it. There was no sort of like, it has to have this on, it has to have that on. Came up with the ideas. You, so you do like three or four ideas. And it's the same with everybody. You'll do like a, like a three different ideas. And then they usually pick one or they'll say, we like that bit on that and we like this bit on that. And then you mold it together into something um more final it's interesting because you you can see that you can see that come across in their content too versus like a dc where you've had all this studio interference it almost feels like marvel allows the filmmakers to do what they want and i know i i can personally be tough on disney and marvel because i want them to do more for physical media but there's no denying that like the content they're putting out there is I mean, it's a revolution. They've they've just own the entertainment world right now, and I think it is because they let people be creative. Like, I don't see you know, would DC have ever greenlit a Guardians of the Galaxy type of like? Not until Marvel did it. <laughs> and exactly, they, they do it. They, they do it after. Yeah. Times. I will say this though: the new Batman movie, excellent, is absolutely brilliant, and yeah. seems like a real. It's weird to say. It seems like a real film, right? It's like a self-contained, which is kind of fresh at the moment because obviously there's been this whole thing where you've got to have an Easter egg for the next movie, which is great and I love and I'm well into that obviously with all the Marvel films. But what was great about this one was it was self-contained, but it also just felt like um, it's hard to put a finger on really, just like a a singular voice behind it almost, apart from the Joker scene, which was stupid. (laughs) Yeah, they probably could have just... You know, I'm kind of glad. At first, I was like, man, I saw the deleted scene. And I was like, I think I wanted that in it. But then thinking about it, I'm like, I'm kind of glad they cut all that. And I yeah. kind of wish they had just cut the end of it, too, and not done that. And just, you know, let that happen organically. But, I mean, you're right. I mean, that's probably the best. I mean, is, is that up there with Joker? Like, when they do these sort of singular 
character focus. You can almost remove Batman or Joker from that movie, and it's still a good movie. And that's no, that's I agree. Of, yeah, that's the thing that interested me so much about Batman and and this new movie it was like it's first of all it was the detective Batman that like I grew up on with the yeah, animated totally, series yeah. like it felt much more in line with my childhood versus like the almost. Iron Man, Batman that they were trying to create with like Ben Affleck, like they were almost trying to do this. Like, I have all these superpowers and crazy money and crazy gadgets, and I was like, nah, just, just give me that sweet black muscle car with you know just a, a a regular old costume. Like, give me the detective story, the gritty, you know, dirty detective story, and it was it was awesome. So, I am hopeful that they take the success of that. And turn it into, you know, a, a different sort of path and let filmmakers go. And like Matt Reeves obviously nailed that. And that was a lot of his creative vision. So, you know, when you mess with that, that's been their issue in the past. And I'm, I, I do give Marvel props for that. Like letting Taika Waititi direct Thor movies. Like who, who would have? That combination. Yeah. And then it's so crazy. different as well. It's obvious that they've let him sort of. Within there's obviously parameters because there's going to be, but it, it's so different to the previous Thor movie that it's definitely got to be down to like his creative decisions and the fact that they let him do that, and then it's got like you know Jeff Goldblum in it being hilarious and stuff. <laughs> it's just great. like <laughs> it's yeah. just great. So yeah, love those movies. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad to hear they're letting you run with it because I always think I think Disney and I think you get you get the big mouse and they're very strict, but I do think that they've uh, allowed the creatives to flourish, so that's that's good to hear. It's, it's that's my whole experience with them has always just been like, yeah, they just sort of go, you do this, please, um, and there's no parameters really other than um, you know typical stuff. Yeah. Which you would you wouldn't do anyway. It's just stupid things you wouldn't do on 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 right. big projects. So. Yeah, make sure yeah. the main character somewhere. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's like right. why wouldn't you? <laughs> right. No, it makes sense. Um, and, and I mean, you can you can see some of their you know some of the theatrical posters they put out, but I, I've been iffy on. But then they always have these variants that are really really cool. I, I love that they have like. Yeah, eight, nine or ten different. That's posters. like their approach. I think is to have the sort of generic one. Yeah, that's going to be in the movie theaters for like you know like I don't know the average people who maybe don't know what it is, right. and so it needs that sort of pull. The floating heads. Yeah, and yeah. then they do like alternative ones that they'll do on social media or like do giveaways or you know that sort of thing. So it's it's quite a good approach, I think. And the more and more, they're definitely using that sort of pool of talent. I think. Um, does something different to the norm because it just sticks out. It's like the Thor poster. Uh, I've just, I know I said before, it was really cool, interesting design. I did think that's pretty much what I would have done for a, for a teaser poster for Thor. <laughs> uh, nice and colourful, but then like having Natalie Portman post the yeah. version that's her and it's the same but her, that's just like brilliant, clever. Yeah. Well, if you if you get their ear anytime soon. You need to tell them to start putting that on their packaging too, because um, oh yeah, variant variant packaging that'd be great. Uh, something you know, their steel books are usually pretty cool. Like I have a, I have a Guardians of the Galaxy steel book that's like the it, it looks like a cassette player. Like that's awesome. Like I, I it has the awesome. Oh book yeah, I remember there. that one. Yeah, yeah. So like those are some of my favorites. But man, that that, that standard packaging they could do some really really cool stuff with it. And, yeah. Um, I've like only ever done a few Disney ones. I've done um, a couple of steel books for some, uh, just a few of the Marvel movies, um, which was uh, it was like through Best Buy. So I, it was like some promotional thing, and then it sort of fizzled out. I think, and then uh, like a Hocus Pocus, which for some reason was really popular. And people, there's a lot of people that love Hocus Pocus, apparently. <laughs> Oh, Hocus Pocus. I don't, I don't know if it's the same in the UK. But Not Hocus at all. Pocus. I'd never seen it. I've never seen oh, it. It's so I had to watch cute. it for research, and I was like, so really? <laughs> it okay. works. So it's it's station. It's uh, set right in Salem, Mass, where they had like, right. the Salem. So that's like, I live mm, half an hour from there. So oh, all right, cool. October, 
I mean, forget the hocus pocus people come out and droves <laughs> and downtown Salem is like because you can go to the house and you can go to the filming locations because they, right. they shot a lot of it there. It's crazy around here. So I've always been, you know, it's not my favorite movie of all time. It's sort of like a holiday movie, isn't it? You it's, watch it around the Halloween. Halloween so yeah. I mean, like I've always watched Halloween, John Carpenter movie, like yeah, same here. Um, but I guess when you're a little kid, it's better to watch something not quite as um, yeah scary and gross. You know, you know, my wife hates horror movies, so she'll watch Halloween with me. But like, she'd much rather watch Hocus Pocus around <laughs> around Halloween yeah. time. Yeah, my wife doesn't really like horror movies either. Whereas I've always been a huge horror fan. So yeah, um, me too. I don't know how we end up with people who won't watch them with us. But yeah. opposite, I got her to watch the new Halloween that the. Uh, not not Halloween Kills, just Halloween, and uh, she did actually quite like that. Um, although it was too violent, she said it was too violent for me, and I was like, "It's kind of meant to be because he's going around killing people." That's the point. That's kind of uh, yeah, that's kind of the plot. <laughs> <laughs> but like, that's the like the limit that she goes to, and like Halloween Kills is much more intense. So oh, yeah. that's like a no go. Yeah, uh, but all, it's like bad. she wouldn't watch it. She wouldn't. We we got we got about twenty minutes into um, it, volume one, and we had to turn it off. She just hated it, and I was like, "Oh, this is such a good movie." <laughs> it is, I know. So I, I, my wife will come with me. She'll watch the slasher movies. So those those don't bug her. It's not the violence. It's like the the supernatural. Like she can't watch Paranormal Activity. Like that will that will send her. I see. It's the opposite. My wife doesn't like like people getting hurt, especially like young people. So <laughs> kids getting stabbed and stuff. She's like, no. Well, but like you know, spooky stuff, she's fine. Like Poltergeist, she's like, let's watch Poltergeist. Uh, I'll watch that all day. Oh no, she like Insidious, The Conjuring, like the parent. She, I mean, she she had to walk out crying of a Paranormal Activity movie once, and I said, okay, right. that's it. It was it was so intense. Um, but yeah, now and now anything with kids. Now that we have a kid, now that becomes a lot more sensitive too. Yeah, so. I think that happened when we had our daughter. It was the same thing. Yeah, and there's the bit. It's the bit in in it where they're bullying the kid and they like yeah. start to to cut cut him, and she was just like, "This is going off. We're not watching this." I was like, yeah. "Oh, it's, it's a tough scene." Yeah, it's meant to be though. That's, no, yeah, that's sure. what I've always sort of said. Anyway, it's cool. Yeah, but it's uh, it is funny because I have this. The funniest story I have is we went to see Hereditary in the theaters on opening night, and she came with me. Oh, um, I didn't know anything about it. I hadn't like watched a trailer. I was just like, I've heard this movie is incredible. Let's go watch it. And she, we went out before, and she had a bunch of drinks. And she's like, This is the only way I'm going to get through this. Like, I need to be <laughs> drinking beforehand. But of course, yeah. that movie is two hours long, and it's like the last 20 minutes that puts you into like this absolute terror. So it's a that slow time, build, isn't it? Right. And the drinks have worn off. So she's like, <laughs> I'm, never, I'm never going back to a movie like that. Like we, we can maybe watch it at home, but you're never getting me back to a movie like that in the theaters. So it is, it's funny. Mm. Yep. Same. Um, yeah. So other than, you know, Disney Marvel, I know you've worked with, uh, Studio Canal, yeah, over in the UK on some uh, really cool horror releases. Actually, ones that I ended up, I, I actually have those. I imported did you import them, them in? The yeah, because they yeah. hadn't come out in the US yet, and I was like, these are all like my John Carpenter movies that I want. Like, I'm, yeah, I did I'm the four. Them. I did the four John Carpenters. So, had I worked with them before that? Uh, I think that was the first time I worked with them on a home release thing. So, I did They Live, Escape from New York. Prince of Darkness and The Fog for the 4K remasters, which they did in cinemas over here as well, which was really cool. So we got to go see them at the cinema. Yeah. And they we did, like, the big posters that were up in all the cinemas and everything. So, like, like the sort of kid in me that used to go to the cinema and, you know, walk down the, down the, down the um, aisle to the different screens and you've got the, the posters along. Yeah, I always used to love looking at those when I was a kid and seeing what was coming next because that's how you found out what was coming next. Um, and I actually had those John Carpenter posters. And John Carpenter is my favorite director as well, mm-hmm. so it was just like brilliant doing them. I think I could be wrong, so I, this, I wouldn't take it as fact, but I think it might be the best-selling um, 
4K that they've ever had um, with Studio Canal. Those ones just sold oh. so well. And they, yeah. they keep re-releasing them as well because they're just so popular. I mean, the remasters are brilliant. I mean, I'm assuming you've watched them. Yeah. But they're yeah. really, really good remasters as well, like quite sensitively done, you know? Yeah, and they don't, you know, that's that's always the thing is like, I want it to maintain sort of an original look and feel. You you don't want it to be smoothed out. You don't want not too much now. The grain, you know, it's still a it's a John. Oh yeah, like those Star Trek ones, the Star Trek Blu-rays that they just all like wax figures from those first Star Trek Blu-rays were awful. Right, and so you know, I never want that. So I do. Studio Canal does a really good job with a lot of their their releases. I've I've imported a lot of their stuff because. Um, sometimes I even, you know, I don't know what they're doing, but sometimes I like it better than the U S equivalent. Um, usually shout factory will put them out. They're close. Yeah. I'm, they're, they do. They, they, they like different. sort of work together in a way. I think, I think they use the same, um, masters of the films or whatever. Yeah. So, so they use the same masters, but then sometimes there's, you know, there's different processing on the back end or something or you know shout will color sound might be different and stuff yeah yeah they they slightly adjust it so it's it's always very close but for some reason you know maybe i'm just a a fan of studio canal and what they're doing but i mean i'm also a huge shout fan but uh yeah i've been importing their stuff and i did i imported all all four of those um in the artwork i have to say definitely caught my eye because it was so different from from what i was used to well, that was the thing. I, I had a we had a call. I'm doing some work for a, for a big studio on this ridiculous project, which I can't talk about. But uh, <laughs> they came up, and it came up because of um, we did the thing as well with Universal, and it was the same art style, and they did the same box layout and everything. So that when you've got it on a shelf, it matches in, and that was all agreed with with Studio Canal and everything. So it was kind of like. Um, think one of the first times that's ever really happened across a studio doing carrying over like an art style like that um anyway they it was really funny they were like saying how they're horror movies but they've got pale spines and they said that's they were like that's a no 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 that's a huge no no you can't have pale because that's for romantic comedies and i was like can't you <laughs> it's yeah. made they like they said with the we always do black yeah you know, right. and I was yeah, like, well, is black. I didn't, well, that hey, they, they sticks have. out. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. But the only reason why that is, is because of the posters. And I wanted the posters to have that sort of seventies feel and seventies posters kind of usually always would have had a border. Right. I guess it, I don't know if it's because of the printing, the way they used to do it, if it was cheaper or, or it was just the way they did things. So there's, it was trying to give it that sort of retro feel, and then that just carries over onto the spine because it's sort of like the natural thing to do. Yeah. No, I mean, they definitely, you know, I, I, I had heard they were coming out, and I was like, okay, I'm interested because they hadn't come out in the U.S. And then the artwork is kind of what sold me. I was like, I can wait. I'll get the U.S. ones, but I really like the way those look. So that's that's sort of why I imported them. That's before I probably had ever even talked to you. I had no idea you had even done them, so I'm not – uh I'm not just saying this because oh, that's very cool. This Thank you. Before I knew you, um, but yeah, they're no, they're really, really well done. And if anybody out there is looking for a cool artwork on those releases, um, you know, shout shout does a good job too. But I thought those are those are really cool. So yeah, I like working with Shout Factory. I've worked with them on the Transformers, which is another one. Like, which is, mm-hmm. I mean, you can see. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you like Transformers? Just a little bit, just a little bit. So that was just like, yes. And I had to sort of pretend that I was cool. And I'm like, yes, I would love to work on Transformers. And, <laughs> and really, I was like, because I used to rent that on video every week when I was a kid. So then I get to the 35th anniversary artwork. And that's another weird one where you get like, the, like a style guide yeah. and it's all sort of new versions because they did a whole bunch of new toys. Um, and they did new artwork based on them, and it's not based on the film, and they're like, oh, we want to sort of tie it in with all this, and I was like, very much like, Shout Factory agreed with me, obviously. No, no, we should try and do it old, and like the old sort of cartoon, the original Transformers, because, I mean, that's who's buying it. Um, and then that thing ballooned up into this huge project, and I did it for the UK and the US. 
And that was um, the, that's, this is the animated version. The um, animated eighty six movie, not the not right. the not the Bay movies, no. Right. Um, so you do. This is the the Steelbook art, right? Steelbook and the Blu Ray and the four K. Four K. Yeah. And I have the Steelbook, so that was my reference point. Yeah, that's like got uh, Hot Rod on the front, and then I did the special box for Zavi in the UK, which is the swanky, oh. swanky, swanky. Yeah, I have super seen limited that. edition. Yeah, it got, it's got like posters. Um, and they let me do a reversible sleeve, so it's got my artwork on the sleeve, but then the reverse is the original artwork as well, which they let me do, which was cool because I was like, I want the original artwork. Um, I remastered all that and stuff, so that was really good fun doing that. Um, but that sold out really quick. I think they did about two thousand, three thousand units, and it just because it's limited edition, so right. they want it to sell out. I guess it just sold out really quickly, and I'm like, yeah. I wish they'd done more on this. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's, that's the problem with the limited edition. It's like, oh, well, now only 3,000 people have access to it. Um, but I, I bet that if it's popular enough, you know, they may do just like a standard edition. Yeah. Uh, re-release. They tend to, like Arrow Video does that a lot with their yeah. limited edition. Well, the Studio Canal ones, these were limited edition. And then they did. Yeah. They did more. Um, so... Which I can appreciate. I like that approach. I don't love the, hey, there's 5,000, get them before they're gone, or you never get them again. No, not me neither, really. It, it, you can just see it as a sort of second edition, really, in a way. Right, yeah. What's it's, the difference? You, know, you you either get the, it's just like a book. You got the first edition of the book, or, you know, you get the paperback. Yeah. It's, you know, either way, yeah. at least you're getting the content. Um, we're not taking that away from people, so. Because that's the that. thing, isn't it? Like, you know, we as as nerds that buy these things, we bought it on. I mean, I don't know if you have, but I've bought a lot of stuff on video originally. Yeah. Then DVD, then HD DVD because for some stupid reason I decided to do HD I DVD. That one. Oh, I don't know. I had a stupid player on an Xbox, and I was like, uh, yeah. "Oh, HD DVD is the way to go. That's the one." Yeah. And I bought a bunch of them, which are all defunct. Um, I've got some laser discs somewhere for some stupid reason. Um, and um, and then Blu-ray, and then 4K, and then special editions. So, like, I've bought Transformers like, like six, seven times. And then the one I've bought the most would probably be Blade Runner. I've had so many different versions of Blade Runner. Have you done a Blade so, Runner poster? I, I did do a Blade Runner poster, yes, but it was a bit... Yeah, I wasn't particularly happy with it. Not your favorite. <laughs> yeah, that might be changing in the future. You never know. So yeah, it's the well, f- it's the fortieth anniversary this year, isn't it? Uh, what do we got? Nineteen eighty-two. Yeah, yeah. Eighty-two. Yeah. So there'll be stuff. I would have thought. Probably. Yeah, you'd think so. I mean, the studios never miss a chance to capitalize. No, on not on a film like that that everybody just buys and buys and buys. Because like, I've, my wife's been said, "You've already got Blade Runner," and I'm like. Yes, but I I don't have it on 4K. Or yes, but I don't have this box. <laughs> oh yeah, and so, some of the movies like it's like I was saying I love Halloween and I've, I've been collecting them on. It's like there's a 20th, a 25th, a 30th, a 35th, yeah. a 40th anniversary. There's every five years you're getting a new set. I've still got, got my my 20th um, yeah. anniversary yeah, of Halloween because it was one of the first one of the first DVDs I bought. The yeah. 20th or maybe the 25th? It might have been the 25th. No, uh, 20th. 20th, it would have been 1998, so... Could it, it no, the first... No, um, it might have been. The first DVD I ever bought, definitely, was The Matrix, because I bought that in... I feel like, like that was n- everyone's first DVD. That in the stupid cardboard box, you know? Yes, it must have sold so well. It was like the coolest movie that year, yeah. you know, and I was like, well, I'm, I've got to have it. And I, I didn't actually have a DVD player or um, a, a, a TV to watch it on. I had a DVD drive in my computer, and I watched it on, like, a computer monitor. Yeah. <laughs> so 1999. I thought it was yeah. amazing. That movie was just, like, perfect timing of crazy technology, this amazing visual and audio, and then DVD was, like, just yeah. starting to bloom. I mean, that must have sold millions in that might be yeah I, i'd have to look i wouldn't be surprised if that's like the best-selling dvd or i know that in the uk because i used to work at, um i mean it might have changed since then but um when i worked at hmv in the uk the best-selling dvd that 
the market here had ever had was Despicable Me. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it just is... blew up beyond belief for some reason. Despicable Me, just everybody bought it. That is surprising. Weird. I, I remember them he, saying I think that here. It's actually the Lion King. I think the Lion. King oh yeah. Here, I, I want to say that's number one. I think it's also number one on VHS, um, which makes a lot of sense. But I, I've never heard Despicable Me. I, was, I remember it. I mean, I could be wrong, but I remember it them saying yeah, that. I mean, yeah, and I was like, yeah. really? Just people me? Okay. Well, it's like, hey, you would have, how many copies of Hocus Pocus sell over in the UK? You know, it's different, you know, things blow up in different countries. Sometimes yeah, that's it's so, so true. What, what catches on. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I've got, we got just a couple of minutes left here, but I did want to chat, like, what do, what do you have in the future that you can actually talk about that you're not going to get struck down by um, America? Well, <laughs> There's nothing I can talk about in specifics, but I know I can say I've got more projects with Studio Canal, um, and then there's this big sort of project that's coming up uh, with the studio that's like twelve titles, which could still not happen, um, but that one could be really, really cool and exciting. But this is this is in the UK, so it's kind of like, I don't know if it will cross over to the US right. as well. That's the thing, because it's like the, the Studio Canal ones, obviously, for some reason, they did cross over into the US to a certain extent. I guess because, like you say, they hadn't been out on 4K yet over there. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, just the usual sort of stuff, anniversary stuff, um, you know. Anything that's come out lately? that we may have missed or anything that is coming out? I've not had anything out um, or since last year now. The thing that was the last big one, the thing yeah. 4K, um, which sold incredibly well apparently. Um, it's a beautiful 4K movie. So, and yeah, the artwork is... And I, I was surprised really actually on the 4K on that because I got the Blu-ray obviously and, I, and it is actually quite different. Yeah, substantially so, really. Because yeah. sometimes they're not that different, and it's like, did they use the same scan? But I well, think I they think, did a new scan, right? Um, or is I, it just different timing on it and stuff? I don't know. It's, it's, I, it's, it's, I, if I remember correctly, they had they had scanned it in four K. So the, the poster I have behind me, that Shout Factory release, pretty sure was a four K scan. Oh, so it was one of those where they mastered it in two K or whatever, and then. Yeah, so they had yep. the, they they downscaled it, but when the new one came out, the biggest thing with the thing is the the color timing was it is different, much isn't it? Yeah. improved. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was improved. I mean, it's a lot of that comes down to personal preference too. And some people say, nope, I I hate it. It's too much. Or yeah, oversaturated. But I thought they did a really nice job. On I love a huge thing. jump. So I don't know if you've seen the Flash Gordon four uh, K. Yeah. Yep, the jump on that between the DVD and not well the Blu-ray even and the 4K Crazy. is mad. Like the red because it's got so much red in it as well. It's just like so vibrant compared to what they did before. So I really like when they do stuff like that. To be honest, when it's like a jump in quality from an old film, yeah, you know, to, into a new copy of it. Because like modern films, they tend to just look good. It's like the Batman that's right. going to look great on on 4K. Right. But I've not seen it looking rubbish on VHS, so I don't have that sort of joy <laughs> of wow that. Uh, and then you, you know, like, and the thing when you notice that the doctor's got a nose ring, and you're like, I never realised he had a nose ring. <laughs> right. What the hell? <laughs> right? Because you can no, actually see it. <laughs> it's it's true, and that's why I preach like these older movies. If you're thinking, you know, if you're looking at 4K, like I just okay, I just got Spider Man No Way Home. Like obviously, it looks great on 4K, but when I'm doing my review, I'm like, well. Yeah, it also looks incredible on Blu-ray because, yeah. I mean, it was shot yesterday. Like, it, how, how could it look, you know, really poor? These these older movies, when they get this the new color timing, or if they haven't had a 4K scan yet and they go back and redo it. Yeah. Um, I just, last episode of the podcast, hasn't even come out yet as of this recording, but I talked to um, James McCoskey, who did The Godfather and Apocalypse Now uh, mm -hmm. Restorations. Yeah, and we we got in deep on that, but it's like, yeah, those are. I don't know if you've seen the Godfather 4K yet, but it's like, I haven't yet. It's like, whoa, like, okay, I'm watching this for the first time. Wow, well, like, can't is, wait! I'm gonna yeah, forget it. It's it's incredible. So it, it is very true, and especially, you know, if you're just if you're just the average collector and you don't have 
the ten thousand dollar home theater, it's like that's that's where you're going to see your big difference in four. Definitely, K. it's like that. That that there's that one, um, the Ten Commandments. That yeah. for some reason it, it it looks like you wouldn't ever believe. It's crazy, yeah. like the difference, and it's and it's such an old movie. I love stuff like that when it's just yeah. like transformative, like to another level. It's great. That one is that that goes back and forth for my number one. Like, oh, does it? Incredible. Um, if you haven't seen Django from Arrow Video. No. Um, that one is unreal for an old western. Two thousand and one, uh, the Kubrick movie. Yes. I, I enjoy that one. Four K. That's Incredible pretty good. Incredible too. Yeah. So I mean, those are the ones when I make a top ten list, and people are like, "Well, yeah, but like Avengers Endgame," and I'm like, "I'm like, yes, but I just it's not the it's not the upgrade, right? It's it, exactly. It looks, yeah, it's it looks like... awesome. It sounds awesome, of course, but it's not the if I'm gonna pay." Thirty dollars to buy this on 4K, and I bought it on VHS, DVD, Blu-ray. Like I want it to be like transformed. Yeah, it's like that old the old scan on a DVD of a film when there's all the grain stuff, and then when there's yeah. credits, and they they're rocking around like, and they're not yeah. being stabilized and stuff. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, and then when that's gone and everything's super crisp, it's like, okay, that's like how it sh- should be. It's incredible. Yeah. So, yeah. No, it is. It's it's. It's a really nice format, but it is it is probably the end. Uh, I don't know that we can uh, go yeah. any further. So I think that you... Well, no, whether it's streaming, it's like... Yeah. Well, I, get, I, I mean, I've watched films on streaming because no, it's easy, course. isn't it? So. It's the convenience, yeah. And I mean, I, I definitely have. I obviously have a bunch of movies, and I like them, and I like owning them. But like, yeah, if I'm just sitting downstairs and my movies are upstairs, I might just pop something on streaming. Yeah. Or, yeah. But it's like the difference, isn't it? I'm not going to be buying despicable me on a sure. disc but i'll buy like john carpenter movies because i love right. john carpenter and i want to have them available at any time because then they're, they're not all on netflix or easy or easily readily available unless you've bought them you can like buy stuff can't you on like amazon prime and stuff yeah um, I, think, but, I think that's where you'll see a lot of business because when you get to 4k we're sort of at the limit of the technology so yeah. now we need you need something that's going to sell this movie. Special editions, limited editions, yeah. steel books. Like you, they have to start catering towards collectors because that's who's buying. And I have a feeling you'll probably see a lot of. Uh, so it's, I think it's like options. selling less. So you're not selling fifty sure. million copies of The Matrix or whatever. Definitely less. Yeah. You know, like you're selling ten thousand, but it's to people who are very hardcore fans and appreciative of having it. Right. So it's it's yeah. A different yeah, it's, a, it's of... a totally different market. It's not. Yeah, it's not 1999 DVD sales in the Matrix. It's like well, it's a collector's market instead of a mass market, I guess. Right, because DVD still dominates. If you look at sales numbers, DVD and at least in the US, 50, 60 percent of the sales are DVD. Oh, because it's what like had five bucks or whatever for a, for a, for a DVD. Yeah, and it, so, you, you, walk, yeah. you walk into Walmart, and there's a bunch of five dollar DVDs in a bin. People grab them. Like they're they're like sixty percent of the market. Blu ray is like twenty, thirty, and four K is like ten. But you know the 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 amount of movies that are on each format also dramatically dips as you get further along. You know, there's a ton um, of movies on DVD yeah. that never make it to Blu ray, and Blu ray that'll never make it to four K. So I see. Yeah, it's yeah. sort of this like funnel of okay now we're at the top and we're all the collectors at the top that are buying these high end movies. But you get more sort of um picky about what you're gonna buy because sure. it's like like you say it's expensive, it's twenty five, thirty pounds for a disc and um yeah. I mean that's where So you just buy the ones from. that you love. Yeah. You know, is is it worth the upgrade? That's what I always that's my reviews. You know, it could be it could be a great four K disc, but if it's not a huge improvement over what we already had because they already had a great Blu ray. Yeah. It's a tough sell. You know, you're going to spend 30 bucks to upgrade it, especially if it doesn't have pack special packaging, special yeah. features, anything additional. Um, you know, that's that's where I kind of come from in my reviews. So. Well, special features that kind of were huge with DVD. Yeah. And now new new films, they don't really do special features. Really, do they? You get like 10 minutes, a couple yeah. of sound bites and stuff. But they used to have like two-hour documentaries and stuff that were really oh, yeah. like the like the Blade Runner documentary and things like that that like could almost be released as a f- film on its own that you could get because it's that good a documentary. Yeah. So well, that, that's where the boutique guys come into play. Where it's like now, sure, you can buy just the standard off-the-shelf release of a movie like Halloween, but if you buy the Shout Factory version, 
it has the packaging, it has special artwork, it has three hours of special features, yeah. it has common, you know, that's where like Arrow Video Criterion Collection, um, they, they start to really, they, they've nailed the collector's market and they're really leading the way when it comes to 4K a lot of times. Is the, yeah. the little, the boutique labels are, are killing it. Yeah, cool. That was a nice chat. <laughs> yeah, no, I really, I appreciate you coming on. This was, yeah. uh, this was fun. Uh, we'll definitely have to, to do it again and certainly i'll be i'll be keeping an eye out for your for your artwork if okay. anything if anything new comes out um i know people can find you on twitter right so we'll put a, put a link yeah just google my name matt ferguson and then i'll pop up that's how it's done you have a website or anything we can direct people to or um just... cakesandcomics.com but if you again if you just google my name i think it usually okay. comes up first there you go aol keyword matt ferguson yeah. <laughs> go google it you'll find everything um but yeah i mean you you do a great job so i'm really looking forward to, to what comes next and uh hopefully get some get some prints up on the wall or something when i finally get into a new room yeah. and have some more room for posters because that empire strikes back one i, I got my eyes on it <laughs> it's really that's, nice. that's one I'm, I'm actually proud of i can actually uh, I, I think i actually did a good job on that and i don't think that about myself uh, no, obviously it's everything i did wrong but that one i only had two weeks to work on it i worked on it over two weeks yeah. it was really short time frame it looks and awesome. i just worked really long days and i was like it's one of those times where you're working on something and you don't know how you did it afterwards i'm like how did i do that yep just sort of came out yep. like done. creative genius it just it just sparked and you went for it i don't know about that <laughs> <laughs> you're too humble you're too humble you do a good job it looks really thank great. you seriously but yeah so uh you can find matt on google google matt ferguson check out his stuff do it find him on twitter go do, do it, it. <laughs> i've got a poster company as well which i would be remiss not to mention vice press vice we sell press. posters there you go there you then go. you can buy them and give me some money that sounds like a good plug let's go check out vice press if you want to support matt so yeah, appreciate it. We'll talk to you uh, again, hopefully soon here when you get some, uh, maybe when you get some new projects, we can come on and do some promotion, but really yeah. appreciate you taking the time. It's a good conversation. No worries. Cheers. It. Cool. All right. I will uh, talk to you soon. All right. So that was our interview with Matt Ferguson again. Apologies for the audio on my side. Luckily, Matt did most of the talking, which is always what I want for my guests. You guys hear enough from me on the daily so um, luckily his audio was great on the video side but like I said if you want to listen to the interview if you couldn't make it with the audio quality if you're having issues here with the video stream certainly go check out the podcast uh, the films at home podcast you can google it find it on Spotify Apple Google podcast any of those RSS feeds where you get your podcast it's going to be everywhere so um, if you do want to just listen to this one again or maybe you know uh, get a better version um, that's over there so Appreciate you all bearing with me for that one, but definitely make sure you're subscribed here on YouTube. If you want more videos like this, we have another great guest coming next week who I think a lot of you YouTubers and viewers will be familiar with, and we have a ton more coming this way on the podcast. Plus, the channel in general still is going to have tons of review videos and you know media news and updates and everything physical media, home entertainment, so... Make sure you subscribe, like this video, share the video, share the podcast, go follow along there, leave us a five-star rating. I appreciate all of that, and I appreciate your support. Make sure to follow us on social media as well. All the links are in the description, and if you want to support Matt, he's got a great thing going with the posters and the movie art. He's selling um, prints of his art, and you can find him on Twitter or in uh, his website, Vice Press, and some of the other links that I'll leave in the description. So go support Matt. Go support him. He's a nice independent artist and I, I love his his story of just kind of making it happen on social media you know one day mark ruffalo sees his work next thing you know he's working for marvel it's a super cool story so go support him and uh yeah other than that hope you guys have a great rest of your day stay safe stay healthy out there and i'll talk to you soon coming soon be sure to subscribe to the films at home podcast using your favorite app so you don't miss another episode and while you're there, don't forget to rate and review this podcast, which helps us out tremendously. You can also help support us by watching our short form content over on YouTube and TikTok by searching Films at Home. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at films underscore at underscore home. The intro and outro were created by Elon Osborne. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.